Hello, everyone, and welcome back. In the last lecture, we set up the integration for the Firebase with our Flutter application, and we did that for iOS as well as Android. So I'll be using the Android simulator for the rest of this particular project. So in this lecture, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we can add items to our Firestore database. Now, if you look at the pubspec.yaml file, you'll see that we already have integrated everything. And if you're not familiar with that, then I would say check out the previous part in which we learn about how to integrate, how to download the pods and everything. All right. Now, our application currently looks like, as you can see on the right hand side, what we want to do is we want to have some sort of a text box where we can enter some information like the name of a particular task, like wash the card or something like that, and then we can save it. But first, let's go ahead and set up our Firestore database. If you go to console.google.com, make sure that you select Cloud Firestore. When you select Cloud Firestore, this is the home page you're going to see. Let's go ahead and click on the Create Database button. Now, when you click the Create Database button for the first time when you're creating the Cloud Firestore database, it is going to ask you whether you want to start in the production mode or the test mode. The production mode simply means that you cannot really read or write to the database uh, unless and until you are authenticated. The test mode says that anyone will be able to access the database and they can read and write from it. And that's perfectly fine because we're just working towards our app and we can change the rules later on. So make sure that you select the test mode, select next. This is perfectly fine. They're just asking you the Cloud Firestore location. I mean, basically it's hosted in a different bucket. So that's fine, we will enable that. And now it's gonna go, it's gonna take some time, but it's gonna create an empty, Cloud Firestore document database for you. Keep in mind that the Firestore database is a document database. It's not a relational database. So everything will be stored as documents. And this is it. This is our view for our Cloud Firestore database. You can see that there's really nothing right now over here because we haven't really stored anything. So now we can go back to our application and we can set up and we can insert something in the database. Okay. So right now I'm using my app over here. I don't really like to use a my app, so I'm just gonna use app and I will change this to app also. I will change this to, this is fine actually, state, state list widget, that's perfectly fine. And I'm gonna just remove everything, all right? There we go. So we only have one widget, which is called the app widget. We need to implement the build function because that's the only function that is required. So there we go. Now I'm gonna use, the material app. So my app will look like a material design app. And now I can provide a, what is it, title. So I'm just gonna say Flutter, or no, it's a task application, right? So I'm just gonna say simple to-do list, perfect. And for the home, I'm going to provide some sort of a widget that is going to be displaying on the home page. So let's go ahead and call it task home page or task page. Now obviously task page does not really exist. So let's go ahead and create that. You can create it in a separate file, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say task page, which extends the state list widget. And obviously we need to implement the build function. Okay, so the task page, is going to return a scaffolding, which is going to allow us to provide an app bar, which is app bar. And the app bar can have a title and I can just go ahead and say to-do list or I can just say task. Now if I go ahead and save it, and this will be a text widget. So let's go ahead and say task. And let's go ahead and uh, refresh this. There we go, so we can see the task. If you don't like that title, we can just go ahead and say to-do list or whatever, simple to-do list. Save it, perfect. Okay, 
All right, so the next thing that we need to do is to create the body. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a body and I'm going to use a column because I know that I need to add a couple of more uh, controls like a list control or something. Inside the column, I'm going to go ahead and add a row because I want to add a text field. So if we want to draw it out, we want to do something like this, a text field and a button right there. All right, so that's what we're trying to do. So that's why I'm adding a row. And inside the row, I'm going to go ahead and add a text field. Now, when I add a text field, it kind of blows up because what we want to do is we want to tell that text field is going to take some space. So we want to expand the text field. If you want to expand the text field, we can just go ahead and wrap the text field with the expanded widget, which will expand the text field. So now you can actually see the text field being created. And we can change the look and feel of the text field in a moment but you can definitely see the text field being created. Perfect. The other thing that we want to do uh, while we are inside this row, so we have to make sure we are inside the row, is to create some sort of a button. So I can go ahead and use a flat button. I mean, you can use a raise button or whatever button that you want. And I'm just going to say save. So there we go. On the right hand side, you can see save. The next thing I want to do is Probably go ahead and color the button to something. So colored start blue would be okay for now. And we can change the color if we want to. And go ahead and press on press. So when the button is pressed, do this. Okay. That looks fine. Uh, possibly what we want to do is we want to put the column. We want to refactor it and add a little bit of more padding. So everything is inside a padding. There we go. And finally, we can change the color, which is the style. So we can say text style and we can go ahead and change the color to be colored start white so that the four, four color or the foreground color of the button is white. Okay. So now the question is, well, how do we access the text field value? I mean, what do we want to do? And in order to access the text field value, we can create a controller. So I'm going to go ahead and create a text editing controller. So you can use a text editing controller and the text editing controller can be responsible for getting the value from the text field, clearing up the value uh, in the text field and other operations. So we can go ahead and say controller and controller is underscore controller. It's a private variable we just created. For the decoration, meaning a look and feel of the text field, we can go ahead and change the look and feel. Maybe we can go ahead, you can do rounded corners and all those. I'm just going to put some sort of a hint text and that will be enter task. Simple. All right. Now, when we click on the save button, the on press is getting fired. But the on press is not really doing anything. So maybe we should say save task. Now, there is no save task. So let's go ahead and create that. So I'm going to go right over here and create the save task button. I mean, the save task function. Keep in mind that for this particular app, I am putting everything inside the task page. We're not using a design pattern like MVVM or MVC or even the Redux pattern. We are just trying to get it to work. All right. Okay. So we have the save task. Um, let's get the value. So I'm just going to say a task name, I guess. And we can get the value from controller.text. Okay, there we go. If you do want to validate the this text field, then you can use the text form text form field or form text field. I think one of those. Uh, let's see actually what is it called? Text form field. I can't even type it over here. Uh, let's say type it over here, text form field. So that is something that you can use if you want to validate. Uh, it has to be inside a form control or a form widget. We're not going to use that. We're just keeping it simple. Okay, so we get the name from the controller. That is something that we have typed in the text box and we're using the controller.txt to get the value. That's great. Now we need to save it to the Firebase database or the Firestore database. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to use Firebase, and you can see that there are many different ways of actually saving something. So there is Firebase Firestore instance and dot collection 
and let's go ahead and add a collection. So what do you want your collection to be called when it is saved in the Firestore database? So collection is kind of like a table, but obviously this is a document database. There are no tables. Uh, so a collection is a group of similar items. So I'm just going to call it tasks. Okay. Dot add. And now you can actually add the task. Now be, pay close attention to what you can pass into the add function. Because as you can see right here, you can actually pass in a map. So a dictionary with a string key and a dynamic value. So we can actually do that. I'm going to go ahead and call add and going to pass in a dictionary. So what key should it be? Well, the name of the task. And what will be the name of the task? Well, it will be task name, the one that we just got right over here, which is what we entered in the database. And that's it. That's all you need to do. So let's go ahead and save it. Let's go ahead and run it and see if we are able to persist a task into our database. If you look at the database right now, it's completely empty. So hopefully after this, we will create a task. So I'm just going to go ahead and say wash the car. And I'm going to press the save button. And let's go back. You don't really see anything. Let's go ahead and refresh it to see if there's any task. And there we go. We have added a task and it's washed the car. So the, the value is going all the way to the Firestore database. Let's go ahead and add another task. Now, one of the things you will see is that it's not cleared up. Now, I need to add another task, so I need to remove it. So that's the good thing about using the controller, these text editing controller, because we can simply call clear after saving. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to say feed the dog and I'm going to say save and it's cleared up. So that's good. And let's go ahead and refresh it. And now you have feed the dog. Pretty cool, right? So it's not that complicated to add something to the Firestore database. You can see that we simply passed in, it's just one line of code, and we just passed in a dictionary or a map with a key value pair, and those values were inserted into the Firestore database. Now the question is, well, okay, we have inserted something in the database, but how do we display it? And that is something that we will discuss later in a different video, uh, that how we can read the data and how we can display the data on the screen. All right, so hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, make sure to download the code, play around with it, and this will be part of my upcoming course on Flutter, which will be hopefully be available in 2021. I'm still working on the course and it will allow you to learn how you can integrate Firebase with Flutter applications.